every year, one of the Raw episodes I look forward to the least is the Martin Luther King edition, as I'll call it. The one that airs every year on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Because I know I'm going to get this big, long, multi-minute video montage that purports to celebrate the life, legacy, and achievements of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. And in theory, I'm obviously all for that. What I'm not all for is the hypocrisy of the WWE every year pretending like they buy into this dream, or thinking that they care about this dream, or more importantly, trying to fool us and maybe themselves as well into thinking that they believe in this dream. If there is any brand of entertainment other than maybe the Oscars that believes in the mantra is white is all right and is the only right. It is the WWE, especially when it comes to their main event scene. And I just sit there for the WWE and I, I ask, why don't you have a dream? Why don't you have a dream to better integrate your product, better integrate your talent roster, better integrate your leadership at the top, better integrate your creative minds backstage, the agents, the producers, what have you. Why not, instead of having to throw out names in the montage that have absolutely nothing to do with your company, why not be able to point to some of the achievements of some of your black performers over the years? Oh, that's right, because so many of them, you put in so many stereotypical, flat-out racist gimmicks, you wouldn't dare want to trot that out there at the same time you're trying to celebrate the life, career, and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King. Now, why don't you have a dream to be better? Why don't you have a dream to step into the fucking 21st century? For Christ's sakes, this is how bad it is with the WWE, and I mean this. They are as white as the candidates for the Democratic Party for President of the United States in 2016. How ridiculous is that? The Republican Party, for crying out loud, believes in more diversity at the top of of their candidate pool with guys like Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio and further down people like Ben Carson than the WWE does. The Republican Party, of all the things we can say about them, pretty much all categorically true and undeniable, they are now better purveyors of diversity within their ranks than the WWE is. You want to dream about something? Dream about that. Start dreaming about black men being at the top of your damn company. Not the tokens here and the tokens there. You know, some real, meaningful, tangible change. That's a dream I think we could all get behind. But I know a dream that we can all get behind. And you make sure after watching this review, if you haven't seen it already, click on the link in the description box and you'll see what a real dream is and how it it attaches to the Royal Rumble on Sunday. But anyways, let's talk about Raw. Enough of this phony baloney. WWE loves loves uh, equality and believes in racial justice for all bullshit. Let's talk about the show itself. This Road to Royal Rumble go-home show. Ah, oh, I'll give it this. The first 30 minutes I was hooked in pretty good. Then it just all oh, kind of went downhill from there. You start off with Chris Jericho. You start off with Roman Reigns. And I, and it's kind of interesting to me. It's like, on the one hand, Jericho fucked over Reigns before in the match, but now he's okay with them. But you don't really know where they're trying to go with Reigns and Jericho, and it's kind of odd that they're throwing Jericho at him a little bit, but not really throwing him at him. I don't know if I'm explaining that right or not. It doesn't fucking matter. That's not the point. The point is, is I see where they're going. They're trying to build to Jericho and Sheamus, probably Fastlane, if not WrestleMania. That might be the match for Jericho at WrestleMania is Sheamus. Okay, whatever, fine. Now, you know, I'm sitting there, and apparently Jericho's got booking powers. And it's not just the type of thing where they kind of throw it out there. They make it so blatantly obvious. He's booking the match. He's naming himself special guest referee. That I'm saying this is such an egregious violation of storyline sense that this will have to, I would think, be addressed at some point in time. And granted, I had a lot of fun with Jericho doing the overacting and you're out of here in his too tight dad jeans, almost mom jeans, Jesus Christ, and his way too tight vest and even his way too tight ref shirt. You know, I could sit there and rock an extra medium myself. 
That doesn't mean I'm buff or that I'm the stuff. And Mr. Jericho, I assure you, the shirts might be getting smaller, and you might be getting bigger, but you're not getting the buff type of bigger. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. The sexy beast is back, baby! Father Christmas is back, baby! But, like I said, the promo segment with Jericho and Reigns, the match between Reigns and Rusev and the theatrics of Jericho, the first 30 minutes of the show, I was good. I'm like, this is an okay start. I was kind of hoping they were going to dive right into the highlight reel and hope they didn't slow play Lesnar again, but ultimately they did, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. But they did address the whole thing with Jericho just taking the autonomy to be able to book everything on the damn show or book a match on the show, make himself a special guest referee. And this kind of ties into my whole thing of, you would think above all else, if you're running a territory, you're going to take yourself first and foremost. If you're ultimately booking the territory, we saw this for years with guys like Vern Gagne and Fritz Von Erich and so on and so forth. If you're booking the territory, Dusty Rhodes, you would think first and foremost you're going to care for yourself. That's a human thing to do. It's a sensible thing to do, especially in part because you might be at the top of that territory because you actually know what the hell you're doing. You're good. You draw money. And you would think from this standpoint, talk about Vince McMahon and Stephanie, they are the HNICs. They're running shit. How could they allow themselves to be booked so ridiculously? And the whole thought of this McMahon family reign and the authority angle, they're just stupid. And why would you book your heel authority faction in such an idiotic manner? You've got Stephanie coming up and it's bark, 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 bark about how Jericho doesn't have the authority to do that and shouldn't be doing that. But yet, ultimately, it's like, oh, I concede the point, and I'm not going to punish you in any way, shape, or form. You would think, you would think that if she was that pissed off about it, she would say, Chris Jericho, you want to be a jackass? You're going to be the second entrance in the Royal Rumble. Good luck winning the title, bitch. But no, she didn't. She just went, bark, 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 yap, 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 bark, 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 yap, yap, yap. And then that was it. And it's just ridiculous. Why in the fuck would she be mad if she's ultimately conceding the point not going to punish him in any way, shape, or form? Again, you're just allowing the inmates to run the asylum, and that is stupid. Stupid! Stupid, stupid! I got a widget on it! I don't get it! They consistently do this with these assholes. Like, even the whole segment with the big rolling tumbler ball. You know where this is going, and you know who's going to be number one. And the acting between Vince and Stephanie was god-awful. Vince and his pathetic attempts to open the thing. I don't even know what the fuck that was. It just made for awkward train wreck. Not even good awkward train wreck McMahon segment television. It just made for train wreck terrible fucking TV. This company cannot have Triple H come back soon enough. Praise God. Because holy shit. Whoever allowed this segment to go on and whoever convinced... Vince, and agreed with Vince that this was a good idea, should be ashamed of themselves and immediately suspended. Because what the hell would it matter? You're the fucking boss anyways. You want to name him number one? Just name him number one. If you're doing this in a troll fashion, it didn't even come across like a troll fashion. It came across in a, you had a week to prepare for this, and this is the shit you fucking wrote type of fashion. It was stupid and fucking ridiculous. Not to mention the fact, we go back to the whole stupidity of why would you even sit there and put Roman Reigns in a situation where there is even an avenue or a possibility of him retaining the title. He struck Vince McMahon. Just fucking fire him! He struck Triple H before that. Just fucking fire him! And it solves the problem! I mean, what the fuck? Why should we hate these people? Why should we take them seriously? Why should we have any credibility of what they said, if everything they do just counteracts themselves, everything they do is just completely fucking stupid. It's ridiculous. Then you got the total divas crap. You got Paige coming out with Natalia for some stupid fucking reason. Oh, could you add total divas? Not a good enough reason. And Natalia's winning after God knows how long she hasn't even been on television. For what fucking reason? Only the WWE would think it's a good idea to utilize television time on Raw, precious television time on the go-home show before Raw, to air a segment that will have absolutely nothing to do with the fucking pay-per-view whatsoever. And not to mention, it's one of your big four pay-per-views on top of that, with such an important stipulation like the world title being on the line in the Royal Rumble match itself. Oh, this stupid-ass company would sit there and try out this fucking Total Divas match on Raw 
to advertise and promote a show on an inferior network that gets a third of the ratings fucking Raw does. Only the WWE thinks this is a good idea. Only the WWE thinks this is smart. Idiot. You bring back the Dudley boys just to have them job out to the Wyatt family again. You just don't do that. It defeats the purpose of the Wyatts beating them if they beat them all the time. It defeats the purpose of bringing in the Dudley boys to put some people over if you don't put them over like gangbusters first or you don't reestablish them first. It's ridiculous. But all the while, you're building a big show. And now what, this time, this week, since he's knocking out the social outcast, he's supposed to be a fucking face? It's a fucking big show. Yes, he's never technically won the Royal Rumble before, but the dude is seven feet, 400 plus pounds. You really shouldn't have to reestablish or establish this dude that much for a Royal Rumble. These are the type of guys that you logically sit there like you used to say with an Andre the Giant, a Big John Stud, a Yokozuna, guys like that. That holy shit, somebody's got to get this asshole out of the fucking Royal Rumble. You don't really need to establish him, and yet they devote television time every week to reestablishing him for what? And yeah, you have what, the mid-card tag title match, as I call it where you've got Sheamus and ADR versus Callisto and Dean Ambrose. You know, I, I will admit I'm a little interested in what they do with Ambrose and Owens uh, come Sunday at the Royal Rumble. We'll see where they go with that. But, you know, again, too much wrestling on this show and too much wrestling, more importantly, that lacked consequence or significance or really did much of anything whatsoever. It's just like, again, like it's so often the case, we just got to fill all this time, we got to fill all this time, and that's what we're going to do. Then you got a fucking random ass eight man tag match. You got people like Tyler Breeze and Stardust in the Ascension. Holy shit! Good to see Neville. Always great to see Mark Henry. What the fuck is this match doing on our TV? Are all eight of these guys going to be in the Royal Rumble? Is that how shitty this talent roster is? Is that people like Tyler Breeze and the Ascension are going to be in the Royal Rumble? I mean, seriously. Tyler Breeze and the Ascension are going to be in the Royal Rumble. Give me a fucking break. Now we want to talk about the shit with Charlotte and Becky. Just more dumb divas crap. I think Becky Lynch is trying to be fair. I think she's doing a good job. It just doesn't mean that I have to give a fuck. And ultimately, I don't. Until you give me a WrestleMania lead-up that's got Ric Flair on one side and Snoop on the other, which I've been talking about for weeks and weeks and weeks now. I don't give a shit about any of this crap. And then we get to... The main event segment. The thing we were slow building to that, frankly, on Monday night, by this point in time, I fell asleep. No other real distractions. There's no Monday night football. There's no college football playoff. I'm just watching Raw straight through. Laser focused. Single minded. All eyes on it. Well, of course, until the eyes roll back in my head and I would. And all of a sudden I wake up and it's fucking almost noon. And who the fuck is calling me on this phone right now? See, this is the type of shit I talk about, people. A black man trying to get ahead in America, and people got to sit there and call on this goddamn phone. It's ridiculous, I tell you. It's absolutely ridiculous. And that's my mistake for not unplugging the phone. Probably a fucking bill collector. Newsflash! You're not getting paid. And my 500-something credit score fucking says so, so fuck you. Anyways, the highlight reel. You know... I get that you're building to this whole big thing between Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. You're trying to tease that's the direction you're going, potentially with the Rumble and the Final Two and maybe the main event of WrestleMania for the title and all this other crap, whatever. But I'm just sitting there watching it, and I'm, I'm, I'm frankly bored to breaks. You know, to me, I'm like, this this is coming up Sunday, the Royal Rumble. It's for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Why not just have every single buddy from the backstage area come out? to the fucking ring and just go gangbusters, finish the last three minutes, have no decisive finish at all. Just give people a small sample, a small taste of what they're going to see Sunday at the Royal Rumble. Sometimes you try to get cute and you try to get creative and you miss the fucking point and you drop the ball. And I thought they did here. Because now all of a sudden we're about establishing fucking Bray Wyatt, somebody who's never won a WrestleMania match, somebody who hardly wins any fucking pay-per-view matches of any consequence or significance to begin with. Now he's the one standing tall standing large at the end of the night after him and his crew took out Reigns and Brock Lesnar. Which is really confounding to me, especially if you're getting to the point where you've reached that you have no other choice. You need to start turning these guys babyface. Why the fuck would you send them at one of the top babyfaces and Roman Reigns and arguably the top babyface and Brock fucking Lesnar? 
It was just a dumb, crappy finish. And it's almost like a telegraph to you that Brock Lesnar's not winning the 2016 Royal Rumble. Roman Reigns may, but he may not. I don't get the sense, and I don't think a lot of you do either, that Bray Wyatt is going to win the 2016 Royal Rumble. So it's almost like they took this main event segment for the Royal Rumble go-home show to build up to a WrestleMania match between Bray Wyatt and Brock Lesnar. Bray Wyatt and Brock Lesnar. The same Brock Lesnar who destroyed John Cena on multiple occasions versus the guy in Bray Wyatt that couldn't beat him in a glorified three-on-one handicap match at WrestleMania. And the only time he could beat him was in a cage match in Extreme Rules that ended up being a glorified four-on-one handicap match where Cena lost because he got frozen in place by a fucking eight-year-old kid singing the goddamn Dixie Blues. Holy shit. I take it a lot of people didn't like this show this week. And for this week, at least, I'm with them. It started off hot. Like, the first 30 minutes, I'm good. I'm excited. I'm pumped. And then 8.30 hit, and I realized I had two and a half hours to go, and it all went from there. 